Smart intelligence have developed a lot. The CTI teams, they observe and they document the tactics, the techniques, and the procedures, the TTPs of many attack groups. They identify and they track the adversarial infrastructures, and this provides a massive amount of indicators. Ten years ago, it was difficult to share or to receive such indicators in confidence. MISP there has been a game changer, and now it's expected that in any security reports or feeds you get uh, a link to a MISP event with the context, with the uh, attributes, etc. Actually, I think that the added value of CTI comes with sharing it because you give the others the opportunity to check if they were also impacted or to be more prepared in case they receive the attack later. And the same for you. As soon as you join a MISP community, you may have access to hundreds of thousands of indicators in a structured and actionable way. A security operation center typically collects a lot of logs from or telemetry from the endpoints into a SIM in order to get a good visibility on the systems and to be able to detect anomalous activities. If it's possible to keep that data for one year or even two years, then you have a good data lake of tens of gigabytes terabytes, even petabytes for large organizations, you can search on. So on one side, we have MISP with indicators. They may relate to recent incidents, but quite often they are related to something that occurred several weeks or several months ago. And on the scene, we have that large volume of uh, logs. So at that time, I thought it would be nice to search in the, the logs we have on the SIM uh, for those indicators. And this is where Xavier came in October 2017 with uh, a simple Splunk custom command, MISP get IOC. And that was the inspiration. Thank you. So I wanted to make an app easy to install, to configure, and use in order to get MISP data into my uh, Splunk for the searches and also to be able to, pull, to push to MISP some findings uh, from Splunk. So for that, I have prepared the custom commands with uh, parameters to query MISP and also to format the output on Splunk. But my way of working might be not your way of working, or you may have other use cases in mind. So I also wanted MISP to be very flexible in the use. So to get started, it's fairly almost the time I, I have to explain it. So for the installation, you simply go to Splunk Base, you download the app, you upload on your Splunk search head, and you reboot. For the configuration, you launch the app, you go to the configuration pane, and uh, you click on add, you provide the name, the URL, and the API key of your uh, MISP instance. You repeat as many times, you have different instances, and you check also that uh, the roles or the users, they have the Splunk capability list underscore storage underscore passwords. Otherwise, the custom commands, they cannot access to the API key, which is uh, stored encrypted on the, on the disk. And you are ready. It means that now using misp underscore instance equal the name you, you gave, you can use the rest. So let's review some of the custom commands in the following slides. So there is a title, which is the name of the custom command with uh, some parameters that are the most frequent ones. 
And uh, on the right, you have a screenshot reminding that for every custom command and alert actions, there is a dashboard where you can see all the details and you can play, practice how to use it. So the first one is uh, MISP search. It simply allows you to query MISP to, uh, to check if uh, the value of the field here, src underscore IP, has been seen on MISP. And if yes, you get information from MISP into your, your search. It's a streaming command. It means you can use wherever you want, not on the first line, but wherever you want on your search. And um, the query below is uh, an example where you query your authentication VPN logs for successful authentication, and you check if the source IP has been seen on any events published in the last month on MISP. And if yes, you may get an alert. Then again, uh, it also uh, depends on the quality of the IOCs. The second uh, custom command is MISP site. Uh, that one, um, you can retrieve all the citing information you may have on MISP. And uh, again, it's a streaming command. It supports the three types of citing implemented in MISP. And for each type, you will get 11 colons, the metadata related to, to the counters, if they are uh, citing seen for the values of the field you are querying for. Then you may want to pull into Splunk data from MISP and to store them into a lookup uh, or an index in order not to query on the fly, but to, to start doing something more structured on your site. For this, there are two... Um, custom commands, misp get IOC at the level of attributes and misp get event at the level of events. Those are generating commands, so you must use them on the first line of your search. And uh, you can easily make a custom uh, query using the parameters which are available for each of the commands. I have tried to cover the most uh, frequent cases providing parameters either to format the query to MISP or to format the output on Splunk. But sometimes uh, this is uh, a limitation and you may want to use the option JSON underscore request where you can pass a JSON object. Um, it's a bit challenging because you have to double es uh, you have to escape the double cuts. So you may play a bit with uh, sub-searches or the map command on Splunk to prepare that. Or I have the, uh, to, to make that more, uh, to make that easy, I have prepared a new custom command, misp-fetch. That one is a streaming command. So you have time to prepare first the, the JSON payload according to what you want to query on MISP, and then call the, the command. So you can pass the parameters either using Splunk fields or options on the command line of the command. The priority is first for the field MISP underscore HTTP underscore body, and then the other Splunk fields, and finally the ones passed on the command. I have also taken an opportunity to implement the support for page equal zero, because in that case you can still limit the number of results per request, but the script will go from page one to the last one, and you will get all the results in one, but smaller requests be uh, easier to handle for Splunk and MISP. <coughs> then there are uh, alert action. The first one is uh, to create e um, events on MISP or to update them if you provide uh, an event ID. You can group several rows from your results um, using the unique ID uh, feature and every row on the 
results having the same unique ID will be grouped into the same event. So you can create several events in one go and group them according to, to your needs. And you can pass strings there or better to pass a field name and the script will evaluate the values and uh, act accordingly. The second alert action is uh, to increment site encounters on MISP. So here you can do, uh, you can increment either by value. So you, all the fields you have in your, in your search will be evaluated. And if they are matching attributes by value, all the, the counters of those attributes will be incremented by one. <coughs> Using the, the field, uh, unique ID where you pass the, the field containing the timestamp. So the citing will be done with that, uh, timestamp. And you can do something more selective if you do by attribute UID. So in that case, only the, uh, matching attribute UID will be incremented. So here, a typical scenario uh, for CTI and sub teams to to work on is uh, the retro search. So yeah, it's a workflow in five, te uh, five steps. Sorry, uh, the first is to collect the new attributes that have been received on, uh, let's say, on the last uh, 25 hours. And, uh, and then to, to collect them into a lookup. Then second step, you use that lookup to search on all your logs all time to find anything that is matching there. So for performance reason, it's quite often better to do that in two steps. The first one is to search for, uh, the hits and to retrieve what are the index source types and timestamp which can be done very fast on Splunk. And the second step is to query again, but this time with those values for index, source type, and a timestamp, and you get the details, the raw logs. The third step is to increment the counter. So you increment the sightings there, and uh, this is also good if uh, in your use case, you use decay models because then it uh, influences the consumption of the IOCs and uh, the way the decay models work. Optionally, you may uh, create additional events. If you have new findings related to existing events, you, you can create them. And uh, the the final step is to review jointly with uh, CTI and SOC teams to review the uh, the results and to decide if uh, this is a IOC quality issue or if there is something to, to look at. As I said, uh, well, I cannot foresee all the use cases. You may have uh, something... Uh, in mind. So there is that uh, custom command, mispressed. Again, it's a generating command you have to use first, but here you have an example using the Splunk command map to prepare the JSON underscore request before passing it to to the custom command mispressed. It supports the four uh, methods for the MISP open API, get, post, put, delete. So, uh, you can take any endpoints from the documentation and provided you have granted the, the permissions to the API key, uh, you may query MISP, uh, and, uh, make use of that. So, to sum up, uh, with MISP42, you can enrich your search and your detections by querying on the fly for matching attributes in MISP. You can get uh, data into Splunk more structured 
with uh, a bunch of custom commands. Uh, you can send data to MISP with the alert actions, creating events or updating, incrementing the site encounters. Or you can do with MISP REST all the rest of the use cases you have in mind. Again, depending on the priority, uh, or the permission, sorry, you give to the API keys. Here are some links so to related to, to the project. Um, please have a look also at other projects like the one that was pre presented this, mo uh, this morning, Kratos, which uh, looks good and may be a better fit for your use cases. And uh, thank you, Circle, and uh, all the people working around the MISP. Uh, because it's really great. And thank you all for your attention. Thank you.